The NFL is booming right now between training camp, between cut down day, between injuries and the pup list and all this shit that's happening. You guys don't have to pay attention. That's what you pay me to do. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about, I don't know, the 10, 15 most important things that have happened over the last two weeks so that you are not ill prepared for your draft. And in order to not be ill prepared for this video, first things first, tuck them in. Let's eat. First bit of news that's on everybody's mind is Jonathan Taylor. So he does not end up getting traded yesterday. But I want to remind you that that trade deadline was fake. That was not a real trade deadline, okay? That was what the team imposed on Jonathan Taylor to find a trade partner. However... The pup deadline was also yesterday, meaning the physically unable to perform list. The NFL has to be notified of the players from each team so that if a player remains on the pup list, they are required to miss the first four games of the season. Now, regardless of whether or not Taylor got traded or he got cut or whatever may have happened to him, he remains on the pup list. So no matter where he starts the regular season, he will be doing so from the bench. He will be doing so from the sidelines. He will not play in the first four games of the season. Now, I will caution you, I will caution you, if any of the plans that you make over the next couple weeks rely on Jonathan Taylor being a part of the Colts organization, I would just move cautiously. Like I said, that trade deadline yesterday was a fake, made-up, fairy trade deadline. Jonathan Taylor does not want to be part of the Colts anymore. The Miami Dolphins very badly want Jonathan Taylor, so do not be surprised, you're hearing it here, do not be surprised if the Dolphins still trade for Jonathan Taylor prior to the October trade deadline, prior to the start of the regular season. There are a lot of moving parts here, but don't be surprised if that still happens. So what I will say is move cautiously on Jeff Wilson, on Raheem Mostert, on Devon A-Chain. I'm not saying they're undraftable, but I'm saying... You get what I'm saying. So JT right now, I updated all my rankings in the draft guide yesterday. I sent out the uh, updated version of that. Jonathan Taylor moved back to around the RB18 for me, which is going to be around like the early fifth round range-ish when you start to throw all the other positions into the mix. He obviously comes with a, a lot of risk. The reason he is likely on the pup list still is that ankle injury still bothering him from last year. So there are, there are a lot of moving parts of the JT situation, right? Whether he likes Jim Irsay, whether he likes the Colts, whether or not they want to pay him, he wants an extended contract, obviously. So whatever team trades for him does have to pretty much guarantee up front that they are going to extend him and give him a fat bagel at the end of it. Plus this ankle injury, man, this is something that should have taken a couple weeks, a couple months to recover from at the end of the year. And now it is going into the regular season. So this, uh, this scares me a little bit. That is where I would be cautious about Jonathan Taylor. So he moved down to like the RB 18, 19 ish range where I think you have other guys that have question marks, right? Like JK Dobbins is in that spot. Cam Akers is in that spot where it's like, we like those players a lot, but there are huge red flags. Okay. So be cautious. If you are out on John, Jonathan Taylor completely, I have no problem with that. He is definitely not a, like a super target for me now that he's dropped back in drafts. I think he's dropping back according to all the nonsense that's going on right now. So don't think you're getting a steal with JT in the third or fourth round because he's on the pup list and he's going to be good to go. We don't know if he's going to be good to go in week five. We don't know what team he's going to be playing for in week five. So move with caution. Kyler Murray uh, remained on the pup list as well, unsurprisingly, that got rid of Colt McCoy and then traded for Joshua Dobbs, who was like a 28-year-old backup QB. It's going to be between him and Clayton Toon. I, I don't really know what's going on in Arizona, to be honest. I mean, we all know what's going on in Arizona, but I mean the quarterback situation. I am not drafting the quarterbacks there in Arizona. So if anything, I, I feel like this probably points more to Kyler Murray not playing this year. This has kind of been something I've been thrown at you guys for the last few months. Uh, Kyler Murray has never been a target of mine in these best ball drafts. I was never taking him in the 13th round, hoping that he plays the last eight weeks of the season. It just, it just, it, it's icky there, man. It is gross out there in Arizona, and I don't really want a part of it outside of Michael Wilson. Bang. All right, what else we got? We got Jerry Judy dealing with a pretty significant hamstring injury. If this is like a four to six week recovery, that means it's a grade two, which means it's probably really a four to six week recovery. If not longer, hamstring injuries just linger into the season. Jerry Judy's been dealing with injuries like nonstop the last couple of years. So 
Jerry Judy was not a guy I wanted to begin with. I thought the fourth round ADP was was wild, and now it just feels like Cortland Sutton. It kind of feels like Cortland Sutton's going to be what Hollywood Brown was last year before D Hop came back, right? Like even if you don't believe Cortland Sutton is good, he's just kind of going to be forced into the wide receiver one role into a mediocre offense, and he'll probably. Even if he's not efficient on the targets, see like seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven targets per game. And I'm cool with him for sure as like a flex wide receiver play here. Jerry Judy, I don't really expect back until he did avoid the pup list, which was a little bit surprising to be honest with you, but I don't expect him to be back onto the field until like week three, week four, the earliest. And then he's probably gotta get ramped back up to speed. So I don't think you'd even be able to use Jerry Judy comfortably in your fantasy lineup until like week five, six. So for me, he's like he's pretty much off my board. Terry McLaurin uh, also avoided the pup list. Most of the most of the guys that we were like a little bit nervous about being injured going into the year avoided the pup list, which is good news. Uh, Terry McLaurin's got a toe injury. It's not like super serious. It doesn't sound super serious. I do think I expect him to play in week one, but turf toe and those kind of injuries are things that can linger for a while. So while he's not off my board, I'll probably push him down a round or two, and I will parallel. I will make a parallel move with him. For John, uh, Jahan Dotson, moving him up a little bit because if if you watch the preseason game, and I'm not again, I don't really like to hype up stats and stuff during preseason games, but there was an energy about Jahan Dotson when Terry McLaurin left the game. Dotson filled in and became like the alpha alpha, went crazy, like six for seventy five in the first half of the game with Sam Howell. Every target is going to go to Jahan Dotson if Terry McLaurin misses time, and Jahan Dotson is probably going to break out regardless here, and probably going to put up a nice nine fifty spot season, if not more than that. I think him and Terry are going to go crazy this year with Sam Howell. So Terry, I'll push back a little bit. Jahan Dotson is one of my favorite redraft targets in like the seventh round of drafts where he's going. Jackson Smith and Jigba actually returned to practice yesterday on a limited basis. I still don't know if he's going to be ready for week one or not. They might be cautious with him. Regardless, though, this is good news for something that could have been a couple weeks lingering into the season. If you got any discount on JSN and like best ball drafts and stuff, I got him in like the ninth, 10th, 11th round once the news came out, which were kind of like my first shares because he had been pushed up all the way to like the fifth, sixth round of drafts by the time like the steam was really moving out the chimney. And I was off on that one. I I get how good of a player he is, but you just got to understand like that offense has so many good players, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf and Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet and Gino runs the ball a little bit on pass plays too. So it's like, I get it. Like he's awesome. And I think this is going to make them one of the most feared offenses in the NFL, but like a fifth round pick realistically, I, I don't know if I could make the argument that I, I feel like he's going to have more than 800 and 850 receiving yards this year, sharing the ball so much. Is he going to be an 80, 80% snap guy? Probably not. He'll probably start off as like a 60% snap guy playing on uh, 11 personnel snaps with Lockett and DK being the main outside guy. So there's a lot of caution there. Now you can get him at a discount if your homies think that um, he's going to be out for a while. If your homies are nervous about this wrist injury, they're like, oh, he's a rookie and now he's got a wrist injury. I would take the discount on him because he's a player over the second half of the year that could absolutely explode like we typically see with a lot of rookie wide receivers. What else we got? Uh, Pierre Strong was traded to the Cleveland Browns. Pierre Strong was a guy that I really like coming out of college. He uh, is a major, major athlete. He was a very big producer at a na- uh, non-Power 5 school. Pierre Strong reminded me a little bit of like Raheem Mostert. He actually reminded me of a combo of like Raheem Mostert and Elijah Mitchell. I thought he was a little bit better as an inside runner than Raheem Mostert, but very, very explosive. I think it's a cool little tandem between him and Nick Chubb, but he is coming over super late in the summer, so it might take him a minute to really get like up to speed with the actual offense itself. And Jerome Ford did just return to practice as well, so maybe this is just more of like a depth play. Maybe it's more of just like a committee behind Nick Chubb. All in all, it's just Nick Chubb fucking season. That's it. Mike Evans apparently dealing with a groin injury that kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, he is expected to be ready for week one. Romeo Dobbs also dealing with like a hamstring injury. I haven't heard anything about it, which makes me feel like it's super minor and they just held him out of the last preseason game as a precautionary thing. So I'm still very much targeting Romeo Dobbs in like the 10th, 11th, 12th round of drafts. Trey Lance traded to the Cowboys. I don't really know what to say. It's just, he's just, he's just not, he's just not a good ball player. So that's giving me a little bit more confidence in like Brock Purdy, I think, for a season long outlook. Not that I thought Trey Lance was really going to jump into there, but it makes the quarterback room less crowded. It makes it way more just like, you know, enough of the fucking outside chatter. I think the Trey Lance stuff just became probably a locker room problem at that point. Like he's not good enough to warrant the amount of like outside annoying media stuff that came along with him at this point. And not to his doing, but also to his doing. What else we got? Um, Jalen Waddle 
Jalen Waddles missed a ton of time this this month with like a core hip injury, but he apparently returned to practice a few days ago on a limited basis. He's still got, you know, a week and a half, two weeks to really recover and, and make sure that he's good to go for week one. So I'm not too concerned about him. I had a, a draft a couple of days ago where I took him in the second round after I took Nick Chubb in the first round. So feel fine about Jalen Waddle still. I guess we can hit on Josh Jacobs, too. He signed the one-year deal a little bit similar to Saquon Barkley. I think he got like a tiny bit more money. So he's good to go for another year if you picked him in redraft leagues up to this point. Good to go. If you had not selected him in redraft leagues up to this point because you haven't drafted yet, he is my running back. I don't know. He's top 10 for me, obviously, after last year. But I still worry about the overall makeup of this offense and if they're going to put him in scoring positions, et cetera. I, the running backs are in such a they're, – yeah, their backs are against the wall. What I feel like might have happened, they all got on like a Zoom call a month ago. They all kind of put their collective heads together. And then shortly after that, they all ended up like signing deals, one-year deals, right, where they kind of just took the short end of the stick. I kind of feel like they understood that they had no time to change any sort of process right now. It's already August. So they – kind of just said, let's get what we can. I wouldn't be surprised if something major happens next year. If they have a collective something amongst the the entire group where I don't know if they're going to do a controlled holdout or like what's going to happen. But the running, I think the running backs basically realized they were fucked this year, said, all right, let's get what we can right now. And then next offseason, when we have time to really plan this out, let's come back with something strong. I don't know why I'm even talking about this. It has nothing to do with anything, and I'm probably fucking wrong. But that is where my mind went immediately. All right, so Jacobs, again, a top 10 running back in fantasy, of course. I'd feel fine about drafting him as my RB1. My rankings are fully up to date, and there are two ways to get them. One, on bdge.shop. That is where you can purchase it right through us at full price. But you can get a very, very heavily, it's like 65% discount on Underdog Fantasy, okay? Underdogfantasy.com, or if you download the Underdog Fantasy app, which will be linked down below, and you use our code BDGE, if you're a first-time depositor, BDGE. G E the other way. Here we go. B D G E. And you deposit $10 or more. They're going to double whatever you put down on their platform. We got our BDGE big flex tournament dropping again this week for a second time. So you can play in there or you can do some pick them slips with us throughout the year. But you'll also get our draft guide, which has our rankings, our must draft players, our all fade lists, our draft strategy, all that kind of sheesh for your league types in there. So go download the Underdog Fantasy app, use promo code BGE when you deposit $10 or more, and you will be set for life. One promo code for the rest of your lives. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.